Welcome to Solid Camp Professor on a series of Getting Started. I'm Sydney, your Solid Camp Professor, and in this session we'll be showing you the part on HSS. HSS is the module in Solid Camp that is designed to work specifically on surfaces only, and it allows you to machine a specific surface exactly the way you want it to be machined. In this part that we have on our screen over here, we are going to machine these radiuses over here. We're also going to machine this particular surface here and also these surfaces over here as well, including the radiuses around the part. Now, if we take a look at our first operation, our first operation will be machining out this particular radius over here. Now, the way we've done that, and we'll take a look at our operation in a moment is that we've used this curve over here as a projected curve on the surface. If we open up our operation you'll see that we're using the option called projection of our list of options. In our geometry area we'll be using this as our selected face and our projection curve will be this curve over here. Now, the tool that I'll be using will be a 10 millimeter ball end mill, as this radius itself is a 5 millimeter radius. And if we go into our toolpath parameters, you'll see we'll be doing zigzag going back and forth on the part itself. And we'll also go into our gouge check. Now, in our gouge check, we have to make sure that since this area over here is actually undercut from these walls over here, that the tool stays away from these walls over here. So we have what we call gouge control, where I've told it that the to check that if the tool tip, the tool shaft, or the arbor comes close to any of these surfaces, just leave out those points, thereby not going past the area where that tool can actually go. In addition, I don't want to do this all in one single swift shot, so I'll be simply doing roughing, and I'll be doing what we call depth of cut, where I'll be having a finishing passes, three of them, three finishing passes, with a spacing of one millimeter in between each pass. If we take a look at our simulation, you'll see that our tool path will go down in this area and mill out exactly what it can. We use also our solid verify for our simulation. And you see the tool go down and work exactly on that area only. Now, in our next operation, we've done the exact same thing as in this operation, only using this side instead as shown over here. The only difference here is just the working surface that we want to machine. Everything else is the exact same as in the previous operation. The same thing goes for this operation here working on this radius over here. The only difference here is that no gauge check is needed for this side as the tool can go straight up until that point. This area is not an undercut. And the same thing for our next area on the other side doing the exact same operation. Now in our next operation I'd like to work on these surfaces over here. And what we've done here is actually chosen the option of morph between curves. If we take a look at the operation itself, you'll see that we chose the option of morph between curves. Our geometry, our selected faces are these faces over here. My start edge curve is this curve down here at the very bottom. And my end edge curve is the one on top. In other words, it's going to work on this surface over here, these surfaces over here, working its way from this shape up until that shape over there. The tool that I'll be using will be the exact same end mill, and if we go into toolpath parameters, again we'll be using this time a maximum step over of 0.2 millimeters with a sorting of zigzag on the part itself. Now, in our gauge check area, we're going to make sure that the tool does not hit any of these surfaces as it's going along, especially when it goes across over here, and to simply move the tool away from those areas. If we take a look at our simulation, you see that the tool will work exactly 
on that surface without crashing into these areas or anywhere area around it because of the Gauss check preventing it from working on those areas. Now in our next operation I want to do the exact same thing, morph curves, except this time working on this surface over here. And we'll be using the exact same options as we did in the previous operation. Our geometry, in this particular case, are these surfaces over here. And my start edge over there on top. And my bottom edge, this one over here on the bottom. In my gauge check area, We'll be using again our Gauss check to make sure it does not hit any of these surfaces, especially in this case, these surfaces over there, just moving the tool away from the surface itself. If we take a look at our simulation, you'll see that the tool will work exactly on those surfaces, on these areas over here. Now, in our next operation, we'd like to work actually on this floor over here. So, what we've done here is we've used the option of parallel to curve and in our geometry our drive surface will be that surface as shown over there our edge curve the one it's going to be parallel to is this curve over here it'll actually be running parallel to that curve on that surface if we take a look at our simulation you'll see that our toolpath works exactly parallel to that curve. Now for my final operation I'd like to work on this area over here as shown. These radiuses, these surfaces over here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to again use the option of morph by curves. If I go into the option itself you'll see we'll be using morph between two curves. My geometry are those surfaces as shown over here. My start edge curve will be the first one over here on top and my end edge curve will be the one over here on the bottom. If we take a look at the exact toolpath that we've created over here, and I'll run it a little slower, you'll see the tool is actually going back and forth on that surface, morphing it between the first curve and the last curve. Thank you for joining us on SolidCam Professor on our series of Getting Started. Take care and have a nice day.